it is Bible time and I need a pledge helper and I would like for Jonathan to come. Jonathan, will you be my pledge helper today? Good. All right. He's ready to go. Class, stand, hand over our heart and let's pledge. And then we are going to sing my country to thee. So when we're done sing, saying our pledge, we will put our hands by our side and sing our other song. Here we go. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I like that. I appreciate it. Will God's word ever change? No. No. It will always stay the same. Good job. It will never change. It has never changed. And it will stay the same. Why did God give us the Bible, Kyla? So we could what? We could learn about him. So we could learn about him. You are right. And what is the only book in the world that we should learn to read, William? The Bible. The Bible. You are right. So let's sing about the Bible today. Let me see if I can get some helpers today to sing our song. Let me find it. There it is. All right. So William, why don't you come and you could hold the big Bible. Look at that big smile. I like that hard work. And I would like for table three to come and help. So be the Bible, the B, I, B, L, E. There you go. All righty. Let's sing it together. Are you ready to get out your Bible? Here we go. The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand along on the word of God. The B-I-B-L-E. Bible. Nice. Good job. Thank you, helpers. Actually, you can take your Bibles back to your seat. Put them right there on your table. Good job. Well, I am excited. Boys and girls watching, I wonder, did your on-site teacher give you your little Bible cards today? We have some Bible cards that we're going to take home today. And we're going to practice with those in just a minute. But first, let's say some other verses together. Let's say Proverbs 20, 11, class stand. Proverbs 20, 11. Even a child is known by his doing. Proverbs 20, 11. Nice job. Stay standing. And let's say this verse. We haven't said this one in a while. Let's say Matthew 28, 20 begin. Matthew 28, 20. Lo, I am with you always. Matthew 28, 20. Great job, sit down. Now, on your table, and boys and girls watching, hopefully you have your cards too, and you can use them as we practice these verses. I have some cards in my hand that we are going to use together today. So first, let's say it together without our cards. And we're gonna say 1 Timothy 1.15, class stand. And let's say this one together. 1 Timothy 1.15. First Timothy. Wow, that was really nice. You may be seated. And then let's say this verse together right here. John 14, 6. Who is talking in this verse? Jesus. Jesus, that's right. Class stand, let's say this one together. John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6. All right, sit down. Mm, let's see. 
I would like for the boys to bring me the card that tells me how Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Come up with your card to the front. Let's see if they got me the right card. Let's see, show your friends, just the boys. It'll be the girls turn in just a little bit. There you go. All right, does everybody have the right card? All right, boys, I want you to tell your friends and boys watching, if you have your card, you hold it up too and you say it together, begin. First, Timothy 1, 15. Jesus. What do you think? Did they all say it? No. No, they didn't? Yes, they did. Good. I'm glad. All right. Take your cards back to your seat. Good job. All right. Well, girls, you bring your cards. And you're going to say John 14, 6. Come on up. Oh, careful. It's not a race. Careful. Okay. Here we go. Are you ready? All right, girls watching, you pick up your card that looks like this, and let's say, the girls say it together. Boys, you watch to see if all the girls with, are saying it with a big smile, because we're talking about Jesus, we're using his words. Here we go. John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6. Oh, that was beautiful. You may be seated. I like that hard work. Good job. Good job, girls. Thank you. So I hope that you'll be able to take those cards home today and you'll be able to share the gospel with your friends and your family. Way to go. Well, I think I need a Zacchaeus. Let's see who could come be Zacchaeus. How about Connor? Connor, come be Zacchaeus. Can you bring your chair? All right. Here we go. Now we need, let's see. I would like for your table to come on up. So come on up. Come on up, table two. So you stand in front because he can't see. That's why he's going to have to climb up in that tree. So turn around and get in front of him. All right, Elijah, come over here because you're going to be the one that tells him to get down off that tree. Are you ready? Here we go. Come stand in front of him. Here we go. Okay. There we go. Let's sing about Zacchaeus. Are you ready? Get out your wee little man. Zacchaeus was a wee little man. And a wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree For the Lord he wanted to see And as the Savior passed that way He looked up in the tree And he said, Zacchaeus, you come down For I'm going to your house today For I'm going to your house today Great job, guys. All right. Thanks for helping, Table 2. That was hard work. Way to go. Well, we have another song to sing. Hmm, let's see who could come and help me with this song right here. Let's sing The Birds Upon the Treetop. How about, let's see, Luke come. And Cyrus come. And Lucia come. All right, here we go. Are you ready, class stand? Let's get out our birds and sing about the birds upon the treetop. The birds upon the treetops sing their song. The angels chant the chorus all day long. The flowers in the garden lend their hue. So watch your day, watch your you guys all right good helpers today i like being able to use helpers when i can look out and see that you are helping me by singing by doing verses by participating then i can pick you to come and help sing and i have some more songs in just a little bit that we are going to need helpers with as well well i need it's time to pray it's time to pray and talk to god and so i would like for kayla to come talk to god with me and I would like for, let's see who's working really hard to talk to God, and Luke, come. All right, Luke and Kayla. Kayla, who would you like to thank God for? Mommies and daddy. Mommies and daddies. And who else? Myla. And for Myla. And who else? 
for the brothers and sisters. And brothers and sisters, that's very good. I like that hard work. Are you ready to do a good job and pray? Okay. Who would you like to thank God for? Uh, Jonathan. For Jonathan, your friend Jonathan. And who else could we pray for? Um. What, what's which name? There's lots of friends. Donald. Uh, for Connor, okay. And can you think of something that God made? Uh, the zebras. The zebras, okay. All right. Let's go ahead and pray and talk to God. Prayer position. Remember, we've talked about being respectful. means our hands are folded under our chin. Our eyes are closed up tight because we're getting ready to talk to God. And you can sit and talk to God in your chair because God will hear you. All right. Johanna, are you ready to talk to God? Good. All right. Kayla, can you talk real loud for us? Dear God, thank you for the flowers and Kayla and the brothers and sisters in Jesus' name. Good girl. Okay. Thank you to um, Jonathan and uh, Donald. And for the Jesus. And all the tables in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. We are still in prayer position and our eyes are closed up tight. And now I'm going to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for your many blessings. I pray that you would help us today to make good choices in our classroom, dear Lord. That you would help us to obey and to do what's right. That we would make our brain work, that we would think about the choices that we're going to make, that we would be wise and that we would do our best. Thank you for the beautiful sunshine that you've given us. Thank you for the green grass and the beautiful trees. Thank you for the animals that you give to us that we can look at, Lord, some that we can have pets and some that we can just look at, Lord. I thank you for the boys and girls that are watching, and I pray today that they will do their best as well and that you will help them as they work hard and they learn and they're listening, Lord. Thank you for the missionaries that work hard all over our world to tell boys and girls about Jesus. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thank you, helpers. Good job. All right. Well, go ahead and prayer. get your hands right here. Fold up your Bibles and put them right here in your lap. Joseph, are you ready to listen to the story today? All right, put your hands right here. Well, we have been talking about Jesus, and Jesus had told some stories, some stories that had some heavenly meaning. What were those called? Parables. Parables, good, you remembered. Those were called parables. And these parables were special parables to help people to learn about special things, things that maybe were a little bit hard for them to understand. And so Jesus told them the parables to help them to understand. Just like he told the parable to the lawyer to help him to understand that we needed to be a good what, Johanna? A good person. A good person or a good? Neighbor. A good neighbor. Good job, a good neighbor. And if we're gonna be a good neighbor, that means we need to do what, Cyrus? Be kind. Be kind, that's right. We need to be kind to who? One another, everybody, that's right. So that was a parable that he told Catherine. And what did that, what did he tell the lawyer to do when he was all done with that parable? He told him to go and do what? He told him to go and be kind. He told him to go and do as it was written. Well, that was a parable that he told. Well, then we learned about another parable. Another one that he told, he wanted to tell some people that were listening very good. He was telling some mommies and daddies, some boys and girls. He was even telling some people like Pharisees, some people that were pretending to love God. He wanted everybody to know something, something very, very, very important. He wanted people to understand that Jesus and God, they are not willing that any should perish. Does, do you know what perish means? Die. Mm -hmm, the die. He is not willing that any boy, any girl, any mommy and daddy, any grandma or grandpa, any aunt or uncle, any cousins, anybody is to perish. But he is wanting everybody to live eternally, to live in heaven with him. But the only way to do that is to trust in who? Jesus. Mm -hmm, it's to trust in Jesus, to ask Jesus to be 
their Savior, to tell Jesus that they're sorry for their sins and ask them to forgive him, to forgive them of their sins and ask them to be their Savior. That's the only way. Just like in that verse, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the only way to get to heaven. You can't be good enough. You can't go to church all the time. You can't. Now, you should go to church all the time. You should go to church when the doors are open. Now, our church, my church that I go to, it's open Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday, and we should go to church. And we want to do our best. We should always try and work hard and do our best and not play around when it's not time to play around, but to work hard and to have self-control and let when God is watching, because he's always watching, and let him see that we're always doing our best. But the only way to get to heaven is by asking Jesus to be their Savior. And he is not willing that any should die. He wants everybody to go to heaven. Oh, boys and girls, but will everybody get to go to heaven? No. No. How come not everybody will get to go to heaven, Carter? Because they won't what? That's right. Isn't that sad, Lauren, that some people will not ask Jesus to be their Savior? Some people will tell Jesus no. Well, this parable was to help mommies and daddies and children and the people, other people that were listening to understand that he wants everybody to go to heaven. So he told them about a shepherd, a shepherd who takes care of what, Joseph? Sheep. That's right, he takes care of sheep. And this particular shepherd, he had lots of sheep. How many sheep did he have, Kayla? 100. He did, he had 100 sheep. And he knew every single one of their names. He called them by their name and he protected those sheep. He would take them out every day and he would make sure they had green grass to eat. He, they had a cool water to drink. They had a place to rest that was nice and shady so that they didn't get hot. He made sure that they got exercise every day and he made sure to take care of those sheep every day because that was his job. Do you know I have read before about shepherds that some shepherds even sometimes will sleep outside with the sheep and they will sleep right by the gate so that the sheep will not try to get out because they want to protect their sheep. They want to protect them from hungry animals that want to eat them. That is their job to protect the sheep and some shepherds will even sleep out there outside with the sheep. Well, this shepherd loved his sheep and he took care of them every day. And every day he would bring them in and he would count them every day and make sure that he had one hundred sheep and every day he did but this one particular day they were out by the hillside and something was going on what was happening Angelina baby. yes there was a baby lamb that decided he was going to do his own thing that day he decided that he was just going to have the time of his life and he was just having so much fun and he was getting farther and farther and farther away from the rest of the sheep. And oh, maybe his mommy would go, bah, bah, and just say, you better get back over here. And maybe he would come back a little bit and then he'd wander back off. And maybe the shepherd even was seeing that too and maybe he was saying, come on, come back over here. And maybe he'd come back for a little bit, but he just wandered and wandered and wandered and pretty soon he wandered so far off he couldn't see his mommy anymore he couldn't see the shepherd anymore he got so far off that he couldn't even hear when the shepherd said it was time to go has that ever happened to you have you ever been playing outside maybe you go to the park and you just keep playing farther and farther mommy says you play right here where we can see you and then you just keep going farther and farther and farther maybe at the beach you go farther and farther than you're supposed to go or maybe at the store mommy says you stay right here while i'm looking through these clothes to get you something brand new and you see a brand new toy that you like or you see a friend that you know and you just wander off a little farther than you're supposed to Oh, that can be scary. Well, this little sheep, he wandered off and he got so far away that he didn't know that everybody had left. And pretty soon it was getting dark. And he got so far off that he fell off the cliff where they were. And he ended up in a big bush that had thorns and he was hurt and he was bleeding. And oh, he was cold and he was wet. And now he thought, what am I going to do? Now I'm out here all by myself. The shepherd will never find me. 
And he was so sad because he knew he had done wrong. When you don't obey and you know you've done wrong, does that make you sad? Or do you think, I don't care. I'm just going to keep doing what I want to do. Hmm. I hope it makes you sad. I hope it makes you sad because you know what? It makes God very sad. Oh, it makes them so sad when you disobey. When you disobey your teachers, when you disobey mommy and daddy, it breaks his heart. Just like it hurts mommy's heart. Just like it hurts Mrs. Stewart's heart. Boys and girls watching, it hurts your teacher's heart when you don't obey. And it was going to hurt the shepherd's heart when he realized when he got back to that fold and he started counting and he started counting one, two, three, and he got all the way up to 50 and then 60 and then 70 and 80 and 90 and he got all the way to 99. And where was that little lamb? Now he had a choice to make. He could say, well, I already have enough. I have 99. What's one more? That's okay. He can stay out there. Is that what a shepherd should do? No. no. If he was a good shepherd, then he would go after that sheep. And that's like Jesus. He is not willing that anybody should not go to heaven. He wants everybody to go to heaven. That's why he wants mommies and daddies and teachers to keep telling you about Jesus. That's why he wanted to keep telling people more and more about how to obey and how to do right before he went and died on the cross because he wanted everybody to know how much he loved them and why he came to be their savior. Well, this shepherd did. He went back out and he looked for that little lamb and oh, he was, it was so dark. And oh, he was probably getting all cut up from having to climb on the rocks to look for his little lamb. And he started calling out for that little lamb and he was, little lamb, little lamb, where are you? And all of a sudden he heard it. He heard that little lamb and he found his little lamb and he finally got him out of those bushes and he took him in his arms. Did he yell and scold him? No, no he wasn't ugly to him. Oh, it made him very sad. It broke his heart that his little lamb was all hurt and that his little lamb was bleeding and that his little lamb disobeyed and now he had a big consequence. He got left out there in the cold and now he's hurt. But he still loved his little lamb and Jesus still loves you. And he took that little lamb home and he cleaned that little lamb up and made him all nice and clean again and took care of his wounds and he held him close and tight. And that's what Jesus wants to do for you. His arms are open wide. And he says, ask me to forgive you. And he will clean your heart. He will get rid of all that yuckiness in your heart. And he is ready to hold you in his arms and tell you that he will be your savior. But all you have to do is ask him. And so he was letting the people know that day with this parable that he wants them to accept him as their savior and that they could go to heaven. If all they have to do is ask Jesus to be their savior. I'm so glad that the day that I came to Jesus, that he was ready for me. He had his arms open wide and he was saying, come to me. I want to be your shepherd. And now I'm one of his sheep and he's my good shepherd. Will you let him be your good shepherd? Will you ask him to be your savior? Will you ask him to forgive you of your sins? All we like sheep have gone astray. Just like that little sheep, he went astray. He left the fold. He kept going and going and going and did his own thing. And then look what happened to him. Whenever we do our own thing, it always gets us in trouble every time. But when we do right and we do our best, then, even then, we can do right. And I hope today, even today, if you have not asked Jesus to be your Savior, that today, you will ask him to clean your heart just like the shepherd cleaned that little sheep up and you will tell him you want him to be your good shepherd because he is, he loves you boys and girls and he wants you to go to heaven. Boys and girls watching, he loves you so much. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. You could be in Africa, you could be in England, you could be in Japan. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you are. Jesus loves the little children of the world. And he loves mommies and daddies. He loves everybody. And he is not willing that people should perish. He wants everybody to go to heaven. But your name has to be in what book? The Lamb's Book of Life. Mm -hmm. And the only way to get your name in that special book is to ask Jesus to be your Savior. And he will. He will not tell you no. He will say yes. He will be your savior. He's waiting right now. He's in heaven right now. And he is listening and he's waiting for you. And he, just like that shepherd was listening 
for his little lamb to say, Bab, Bab, I'm over here. I'm over here. Come find me. That's what Jesus is doing. He's waiting for you to say, I'm right here. I want you to forgive me of my sins. And he will because he loves you, boys and girls. He does. And he wants to forgive you of your sins. But you know what? He already has forgiven you. You just have to ask him. And when you do, he will clean your heart. And then you tell him you want him to be your savior. And then he will be your shepherd and you will be his sheep. How exciting that is. I'm so glad that my name's written in that book. And one day I'm going to get to go to heaven. And I'm going to get to be there. And I'm going to get to see Jesus. And I sure hope that I'll get to see you there too. I hope when I'm walking on those streets of gold that I will see you there. And I cannot wait. What a happy day that will be. Let's end our Bible time singing a song. And I want to sing, God is so good because he is. He loves us so much. So let's see. I would like for Bethany to come. There you go. And I would like for Myla to come. There you go. And Lauren to come. And get all the girls up here. There you go. Good job. All right. Can you take a giant step up? There you go. Class, stand. We're going to sing, God is so good. And you help me with that. Stay right by your chair. Hey, yours is first, so you raise yours. you so very much and he loves you and he wants to take good care of you and he wants to be your shepherd and I hope you will let him be your shepherd today let's say our verses again that we have so that we can take our verses home and say them together pick up your card that says Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners good job whoa look at you all right, turn and face your friends. Boys and girls watching, you pick up your card if you have it, and let's say it together. Big smiles on your faces. Here we go. Are you ready? Begin. First Timothy 1, 15. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. First Timothy 1, 15. Nice job. Put it down and pick up your next verse. All right, let's say this to your friends. Go ahead, here we go. John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6. Oh, very nice, you may be seated. So today you take these cards home and you share these Bible verses with your mommy and your daddy and your friends. And I hope you're keeping your Bible cards. You keep them somewhere safe so that you can use these and then you can tell people about Jesus. You don't have to be a missionary that goes all over the world. You can be a missionary right here in Pensacola. And boys and girls, where you live, you can be a missionary and tell people about Jesus. And you could use these cards to do it. 